I wanted to open up the conversation about how women are seen, valued, and made to feel in pop culture and within a range of professional industries. Shout out to the women of the world, bouncing next. As a trans woman, have you ever experienced gender discrimination within your professional industries? Yeah, it's um, it's a bit of a weird one because I feel like I wouldn't have noticed if I didn't first start music being perceived as a man. Because like back back in the day, like opportunities were just like thrown at me, despite in my opinion my music being way worse. Like I'd have people reaching out with like, hey, do you want to play a gig here for this much? Or, hey, we're going to play you on a radio station. But now it's it's a lot more that I have to do everything myself mm. and be reaching out to everyone a lot more. And I never had to do that before. Are you finding that it's really basically the way that you can, you feel you can now kind of present yourself and navigate through the industry has completely shifted. Like it, it takes a, a lot more like conscious effort on my part to get anything done than it used to. Like I remember I think the most work I had to put in booking a gig when I was when I was a boy uh, <laughs> was sending one email to one venue one time for the first one. And then from there it was like or someone who went to that gig would be like, oh, do you want to come and play at this other venue? Or do you want to support X band uh, in Y City? And it was like, it was it was really easy. And it made me think that it would always be really easy. And now since I've like transitioned, there's a lot more resistance whenever I am reaching out to people as well. So if I'm talking to someone and who hasn't heard my music, so all they've got is my name. They seem to be like quite receptive to anything I'm saying. Like they they seem to be like, oh yeah, let's let's book a woman for the gig. Then then we can be like, okay, we've got like four bands with all men and one with women. That's diversity. Yeah, um, tipped. <laughs> and then they listen to my music and hear that my voice sounds like this, and they go, oh actually, I'm not sure if that counts. What? because they'll instantly flip from seeing me as a woman to seeing me as not quite a woman, but also not quite a man. So I don't get either. How does that make you feel? Absolutely shit. <laughs> yeah, I bet. So it's so much harder. And like it works on like the opposite way around as well, where if someone hears my music first and they've not actually like Googled me or anything, then they think it's like a, a, a group of lads or something. And then I'll get an email reaching out and I'll respond and I'll put my pronouns at the end just to double check and then I'll never hear back again. That's absolutely terrible. So are you finding that you're kind of met with this challenge um, through every kind of process now to do with music in terms of like reaching out to studios and reaching out for gigs, marketing, or is it kind of like, is this attitude kind of in a set space? So I've never actually recorded anything in a studio since I was in college. I usually just do everything at home because I've just got all my equipment set up in my bedroom. But um, in terms of like trying to get gigs, it is definitely like a much bigger barrier than there was before. Do you think that's because you are a trans woman or because, I mean, I see you as a beautiful woman or is it because you're a woman? I think it's a bit of both because um, I also you know when you're talking to someone about music and often if it's a man they'll start throwing technological jargon at you <laughs> out of nowhere yeah but like in the past that never happened everything was always given in like the most basic terms possible it was like we were being babied through everything because we were because we were men and now it's like someone will find out that I'm a trans woman and they'll just suddenly start throw in as complicated sentences as they can really quickly and then if I look confused at any point they're like got you. It's funny that you mention that because this is something that um, I end up talking about with you know people a lot is how um, when you kind of go to like workshops where there's you know women in the room um, it's more of like a shared debate. I feel like we're kind of more open to knowledge share and kind of like support each other and discuss things. 
But when I've been in rooms that are very like male dominated, which as we we both know in the music industry is is the main situation, uh, yeah. there's a less of an openness to share. And I've definitely experienced that thing where I feel uncomfortable to kind of like challenge or ask a question because, you know, I want to hold my own. I don't want to feel stupid. Um, so yeah, this, I've definitely experienced myself that kind of difference of being in a room, you know, with men and women. It feels like it becomes a sort of a competition once there's there's more men than women in the room. Everything's being said to like one up the last person who spoke. Which is ridiculous because I think, you know, essentially we want to create a music scene. I mean, you and I are both based in South Wales and the more that we all keep working together and making a loud noise here in South Wales, the more we're going to let the, you know, wider global industry know that we're here you know doing our thing so I kind of find it mental that we're not as open uh in certain spaces to be you know supporting and empowering each other because I've only actually been in sort of workshop environments since starting Resonant yeah. um because I actually prior to that did not have any idea how to go about finding things like that because I didn't do music at university even though I really wanted to. What did you actually study at uni? Oh, I did civil engineering. No way, no way. That's actually the profession that my husband is in. So is that something that you've continued? No, I have not looked at anything since since I finished in June. Is, is that due to just kind of feeling that the, you know, the profession wasn't right for you or is that due to any other sets of challenges? I think it's definitely that the profession wasn't right for me. But I think at the same time as well, there was also like a very clear um, gender diversity issue in the field. Did you find that it was kind of more like male weighted? Almost everyone on my course was a man. Do you know what? That, <laughs> that's so interesting because nearly everyone on my music course was a man. Um, so I experienced the same thing where there were, you know, there were very, very few females. Um, and actually, shockingly, um, when I started my degree, there were more women. And as the course went through, they kind of pitted off and, and left. Um, so there's definitely something going on where we're not feeling as welcome in certain spaces. Well, I think as well, what doesn't help is like if all of the... Um like teachers are also all male then even if they don't realize it sometimes they will just favor the the male students who are often louder in discussions because they're emboldened by the fact there's more of them yeah you're not the first to say this to me i spoke to a physician um in, in a chat like recently danny and he's you know he was saying that even within like the educational system of of medical all of the professors were male, they favoured the male students, even though actually the turnout of um, students there was higher on the female side, they would still offer, you know, the men to go into surgery before they would take a female student. So there is a problem going on, I think, with like an old traditional viewpoint and narrative. I always find it weird because it's as if they somehow do the opposite because they always say like, oh, girls mature faster than boys. And then it's oh, we need to give the boys the opportunities because they've matured faster. Yeah. So, so, like, how does it work both ways? Well, it fucking doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's like gender really shouldn't be an issue in any of these working environments. You know, you're either, um, you know, passionate and skilled and able to go into these industries or you're not. It's not like, oh, you know, you're a woman, you should be in the kitchen and raising the children. And uh, you're a man, you should be gardening and taking out the bins. You know, it's like, yeah, gender shouldn't define role. But how how are you trying to now navigate, you know, these things that you're finding have, have presented challenges to you in the music industry? I sort of had, um, well, my, my, my partner talked me into an epiphany the other week, which is to just take up as much space as I want or even just as much as I can. Like, just if if someone's like not listening over the email just chase it up like don't be afraid to just send it again yeah or forward it to them again and stuff like that like just to be more assertive because I, I kind of became a lot more 
introverted after transition just as a defense mechanism to avoid discrimination, but it ends up being that I'm discriminating myself out of stuff. Yeah, you're trying to make yourself smaller to fit in. Yeah. Actually, you're a beautiful woman with a lot of, to offer the world and you need to be out there going, I'm fucking Roma. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent. So what is it that you've been doing recently? You mentioned Resonant, which obviously I'm very aware of because I've been working with you as a music mentor. But for anyone watching, tell them more about what that is for you. So I, I found out about Resonant. I was in a bus station in London waiting to get a coach back and it just came up as an advert on Facebook. And I filled it out, applied, because it was about helping marginalised genders get more opportunities, network a lot more and stuff. So I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll fill it out. And then completely forgot about it the minute <laughs> I'd hit submit. And then it was like a few weeks later, I got the text saying, oh, you, you've been successful. And I was like, oh, great. Now I have something to do. Um, I initially wanted to just learn more about like production and stuff like that, because I've been doing it all on my own. And the last time I actually had any sort of musical tuition was when I was 17, 18 at college. It's been really refreshing to be around other people who faced similar obstacles because previously if I was ever like in like a, a forum online or something it would be mostly men telling me that it's really easy right but not offering any actual advice that so they just went oh yeah it's easy that I was like is it yeah. like like especially with stuff about like booking gigs and stuff because they've not had the other side of it where it's a lot more difficult. Like they're just like, oh yeah, yeah, it's great. I played this gig here and then I got one there like the next week because someone saw us. And I was like, you got, you got to go back and tell me from the first step, not, not from someone saw me play a gig and gave me another one. Yeah, you kind of want some support in terms of like the processes, like maybe, you know, styles of ways to reach out or, you know, how to expand your networking rather than yeah. someone going like, oh, that's fucking easy that is. Just go, just, just pop out, just get a gig. You'll have a show. <laughs> it gives me the, the same impression as, you know, when someone's like in their like 50s, 60s and they have this notion that to get a job, you still, all you need to do is walk into every business on your street with a CV and they'll, and one of them will hire you on the spot. And I, and I, was, I remember having to tell my mum, like, no, I can't just do that. That's not how it works anymore. Yeah. You have to wait until they tell you they're hiring and then they're bombarded with applications and maybe you'll hear back at some point. Because she was telling me like, oh, just go to, um, go and offer to volunteer. And no, then when they have a job come up, they'll give you one then. And I was like, mum, if they know I'm willing to work for free, that job's going to someone else. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because it's not demanding a value, is it? It's like, that's not too yeah. much volunteering. Cause there's some incredible people that, you know, just give up their time to support, you know, different causes. But yeah, for you as a young person, you know, just reaching out into professional industry, you don't want to be working for free. You want to be building a career. Yeah. Because if I well, if I was working for free as well, I would then need to also have another job yeah. to actually sustain me. <laughs> yeah, it's really, really difficult, isn't it? So do you feel that through the support of projects like Resonant, which have been put in place to support marginalised genders to develop their skills and get opportunity within the music industry, do you think that's helping you grow in confidence and knowledge to be able to try and push through these challenges you're facing? Yeah, I'm I'm so much more confident now than I was even just a few months ago because just knowing that a lot of other people are in the same boat it just feels a lot less alone and it's a lot easier to like build confidence knowing that someone else in the same position has also been able to be successful and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean I know as a woman, it's incredibly hard because there's less space available to us, you know, in terms of gigs, because it's like you said earlier, um, you know, they're booking four male bands and then one kind of tokenized female based band. So we know that the space that we, we're all we're all kind of fighting for that space, you know, and then on top of that, I can only imagine that as a trans woman, you've got those kind of reservations of 
you know, I need to reach out to these people. I don't know how they're going to react to me. Um, yeah. But you're kind of fighting for space now as a woman, you know, and then you've got these other reservations on top because unfortunately we've got stupid fucking people out there who are just not comfortable with us being who we want to be. Yeah, it's always um, like a nerve wracking moment before I press send on an email where it's like, is this person going to be transphobic? And if they are, are they going to either just not respond at all, which is, I can't decide if I prefer that or if I prefer receiving something transphobic in reply, because then at least I know that that's a dead end. Have you actually had like transphobic responses then? Um, not from any, well, not, not that I'm aware of from any like people for gigs, but sometimes I'll get like, an, an email that's just like, oh, I really love your music and I'll say thank you and put my pronouns at the end and they'll go, oh, I didn't know you were one of those. One of those? Yeah. What, like, like, like a person? <laughs> just like, oh I, oh, I didn't know you were. I mean, w one time that they didn't use the word those, they used, um, a slur. It's not cool and I can appreciate how that's creating like a, you know another set of boundaries for you you know like yeah just feeling like whether it's a safe space to be able to reach out and present yourself and you know try and get those opportunities you know and, and I'm really glad that projects like Resonant which have been set up by Yasmin Davis you know are starting to come about in South Wales because I think they're so important in like also helping us find each other because without those kind of projects you and I would have never met you know. Yeah. We, we didn't know that we were both existing trying to make music as women you know so it's really cool because like growing up i'm now in my early 40s but growing up i didn't come across any other females who were like producing music so for me to like come across you know yourself um it's awesome because i'm seeing other young people coming up you know wanting to do the same as me so like that's yeah. really fucking exciting because we're going to be contributing to that music scene here in South Wales and I want us to kind of all pull together and make some fucking noise. I think that, that's another thing like so I I grew up in Wigan just sort of like around Wigan, Manchester, Liverpool that kind of area and the like music scene seems a lot different up there just yeah. because there's, there's just so many venues everywhere and I know that they're all getting shut down but I feel like in Cardiff they're getting shut down a lot faster really so it's just like there's there's like even fewer like spaces for women to perform is there anything that you don't do purely because you are a woman like aside from having to get a taxi back from everywhere in winter if it's past four o'clock um in terms of like specifically related to music, um, I, and this has changed in the last literally few weeks, but I would never email people who were not explicitly like promoting like queer people for their venues and stuff. Like I was, I was only feeling safe to message queer friendly, like explicitly queer friendly venues and stuff like that, because I knew that they would not have any of the uh, phobias that another place might have. But like now I'm a lot less scared of the rejection and any awfulness that comes with that, purely because of stuff like Resonant. Because meeting other people who have done the same thing at least lets me know that I've got someone to talk to if something bad does happen. I can't imagine what it's been like for you to just get into a place where you feel like you can just completely be yourself and show the world exactly who you are and then you're having to like preempt someone else's reaction to you. Yeah, I, I do a lot of, and, I, and I'm trying to get better at it, but you know when you're writing an email and you keep putting little things in parentheses just to make sure that everything that you're saying is taken exactly how you're intending it to be taken, whereas most people would just write the sentence and assume it will be interpreted correctly. But I guess it's because when someone's reading something that's from a woman, they seem to put it under so much more scrutiny 
and sometimes it feels like intentionally misunderstanding it in order to make you feel dumb. What is one thing that you feel that we could do to help change this narrative and help change this kind of treatment? Like one thing that would just help leaps and bounds would be having more women hired in positions like promoters or having like more like female sound techs and stuff like that. But obviously that just depends on who's applying for the job in the first place. And I don't know what the application rates are like, but I feel like a reason that less women are in those roles is probably because a lot are scared to apply or just write it off completely because like, oh, well, I'm not going to get it. They'll just give it to a man. Yeah. So I'll just not bother. Um, but I think there needs to be a lot more like festivals and stuff that actively try and platform like femme and queer artists. Because I remember seeing a graphic of, I think I want to say it was the Leeds and Reading festival lineup where it was the full lineup poster, but they had removed every act that didn't have a woman in it, and the page was almost blank. It's fucking insane. Like, I think too many places view diversity as simply a tick box exercise without thinking about the reasons that they have a tick box like that. Yeah. Like they just think, oh, T time to put a woman on. Do you kind of feel then that like something that we could be all doing to try and help change this is we need to be talking more, we need more awareness within the industry, we need more consideration from venues and booking agents and promoters to, to create more of a balanced lineup and make sure that we've got a balance of people on the lineup and that it's not just like, you know, a male experience that's being provided essentially. Yeah, and I think, like, the general public need to, like, go to their, like, small venues more. Like, they need to, because the more money that's being put into them, the more events they'll be able to put on, and the more likely they are to accidentally discover that women can be good musicians too. Do you have a positive message to share with anyone watching today? If I can manage to, to email people to release music confidently, because I always am very self-conscious about my voice um, and I know that like voice training is an option. There's also like a, a somewhat experimental surgery on the voice box, but I don't want to change my ability to sing. Like accidentally, I don't want to become a worse singer and just have a more pleasing speaking voice to the general public. But if I can keep my voice as it is and present as I am and release music and still feel good about myself, then surely everyone else can too.